Jared Poland Fro Knows Photo.com and welcome to another raw file edit of the week. And this week it is number 37 and is sponsored to you by sponsored to you by brought to you by that sounds better. Brought to you by Drobo. I am hooking up my second Drobo with 10 terabytes of data. Woohoo! Yeah, love it. Can't wait to have my second backup up and running so that I have two forms of redundancy and then a third coming later in the future. But that's about it. Check out the Drobo stuff. Uh, really good stuff. Uh, I know Adam's got it. I got it. And a whole bunch of other people. A lot of photographers use it for something easy just to plug in and back up your information. So here we have a offroadgirls.nef file. Shot at 1 250th of a second. F2.8 ISO 200. Eight, what is this? 86 millimeters with a 70 to 202.8 Nikon D80. So, 200 ISO, 250th of a second. It's pretty okay. That works at 2.8. Could always bump it to 400 ISO to get 500th of a second, which would give you um, just a little more stability, uh, even though it's very, very bright out. So, what do we have? We have some ladies. Hello, ladies. I have some dirt on my face. Hello. Oh, you know what this reminds me of? Which seat should I choose? Yeah, that's right. That's Rebecca Black for Friday. Because it just reminded me of somebody's in the back seat. I'm in the front seat. All right. I like the song. Maybe I should download it. But anyway, how would we edit this? Should we go black and white? Should we go color the normal thing? So I discovered something a little while ago uh, through the help of Adam Lerner who was telling me about the uh, black and white button because I've always just taken out the vibrance and saturation and everybody's like, why do you do that? And I really didn't have an answer. I thought it was the same thing and I was wrong. When you go to black and white, their tones shift. Look, and a lot of that's happening down here in the black and white HSL, but I will show you that in a little bit. Let me just get to this edit and how would I do this? Oh yes, hello contrast. Hello contrast, how are you doing today? Yeah, predictable, but it works. So there's my contrast. Do I want to pull back? Because I think it's a little on the bright side. Mr. Brightside, I love the killers. Gonna pump this, the black levels up slightly. I like it. I mean, I love the thick black. Let me bring this. Eh, I'm gonna go there. Boom. I'm taking it up to 100. I'm taking it back. Fill light. Mm, fill light you can get in trouble with, so be careful with using fill light. Um, but check this out. This is the uh, epiphany that happened when, when Adam was showing me the information. So you can control different tones, even though it's in black and white, we can control, say, the greens. Look. Look, it's controlling just the greens in this file. Do I want to go like this and this is going to make the girls pop more? Look at this. It's making these girls right here stand out more than, say, if it was right here. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to go with that. Um, do I want to do a post-crop vignette? I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Now, for an off-roading picture, I don't think it works. I'm not going to get all all um enjoyable out of doing that so here's some clarity and some of this white balance stuff i'm only going to do one edit i'm going to stick with just the black and white for now um and go from there because i just i just want to do one but this is where did it start i'm utilizing the button which is right above the return key and that's where it started that's where we took it i don't know i just like the off-road feel of the black and white sure color would probably look fine uh but why not go with black and white you guys can do the color oh yeah and i wanted to show you something here when i hit the color button look what happened so with a color edit you don't get the same effect down here with your HSL, so that's why I'll probably be utilizing the uh, black and white button from now on. I did play around a little bit with leaving it in color for certain images. It doesn't work with every image where it's better if you edit it this way, but I found that a lot of it is like, look what we did to this photo by just going like this. Boom. That was with more green. This is with pulling back on the green, and I like that. I think it separates the ladies a little more and makes them go boomify. Boomify. Hello. There, I want more blacks. And that's where I'm ending it. Adam Lerner, you are up. 
Adam Lerner with this week's Raw Edit. We have ourselves a really fun picture here. Bunch of ladies in a Jeep, top down, mud flying all over the place, backwoods, great. Um, this, this looks like a lot of fun. Um, really nice editorial type photojournalistic image. A uh, lot of possibilities for this, and I like the way it was shot. You know, shot. Uh, let's see, 7200 at, at f2.8. So you got a nice shallow depth of field. Really isolates the ladies in their jeep. Uh, brings them up to the uh, front of the frame. The back has that bocalicious bokeh, bocalicious bokeh. There, let's say that ten times fast. Um, and uh, let's get right into editing this image. Very first thing off the bat, I was thinking about you know, a bunch of different ways this could have been shot, but one thing I really want to do here is lose this tree that we have going on here. And when I thought about that, I was thinking to myself, well, you know, even though the, the, uh, the other trees do a wonderful job framing things here, how would this look as a square crop? So let's just give that a shot here. So we're going to go into R key for cropping or the, the crop module, and we're going to go into the one, one to one. Boom, there we go. All right, so I'm going to bring that down to about there, and I still want to get rid of that tree. So I'm just going to bring that up to there, and I'm going to go boom, bank, bank, boom, and hit the R key again. Boom, look at that. Holy cow. I think that there we go. There we got something. I really like that a lot. So let's get right into editing this thing right here. All right, we're just going to bring the exposure up a touch, okay? Something about there, okay? We're going to bring in some blacks. We're just going to just get the black point just up to a little, little bit of a higher point over there, and we're going to add some contrast. Yeah, yeah, just like that. Okay, we're going to add some clarity. Now, if we go all the way up with clarity, has a really nice kind of look. It's really metallic. It's really gritty. It could be like an advertisement for, for Land Rover or something like that. Um, I think it's almost a little bit too much. I'm going to split the difference. I'm going to bring it down to about here or so. I like that about there. One other thing I'd like to do is just give it a little bit of warmth, okay? I'm just going to push this up a few ticks just to about there. Look at that. Look at the nice skin tones. Look at how it looks like there's just more kind of nice afternoon or morning light going through the woods here. Really nice like that. I'm just going to go into the luminance here and I'm just going to bring the oranges up just a little bit and the yellows. And all I'm really trying to do here is just get these uh, the skin tones of these girls to kind of pop a little bit more against this background here. The other thing is that, that you know, you've got this opening over here so there's a lot more light going in here and you don't have these trees really framing things as much right behind these two girls who are having a really obviously fun interaction you know they're yucking it up so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna take my greens and I'm just gonna reduce them a little bit in the luminance and right away all that really does is that it allows for their silhouettes to just pop a little bit more against that background because they're light and makes the background darker and it adds a little bit more into the depth of field all right so sharpening let's just uh, bring that up to about there and I'm gonna mask it off so that I can just only sharpen the contour detail I don't want to sharpen textures I just want to sharpen contours so we're gonna go to about there um, one other thing I'd like to do here is in the tone curve, um, it defaults to medium contrast and I'm going to go into strong contrast. That's going to give me a little more highlight detail, a little bit uh, less in the shadow detail, and I really like the way that that has um, changed the image just slightly enough just to give it a little bit more punch, a little bit more oof. All right, last thing I want to do here is go into post crop vignetting. So I'm just going to bring that down. This is just really to keep the eye drawn to the center of this image. Uh, midpoint, I'm going to just go around like there, just somewhere like that. Roundness, I'm going to do the same kind of thing. And this is really to taste, okay? And the last thing I want to do is just feather this out so that it just has more of a kind of a, an organic blend. Um, and one last thing I want to do is just give it just a little touch of fill. Boom. Just a little bit like that. All right. So let's look at the before. Really great image. A little bit flat. After, punch. Boom, right in your face. You are just standing in front of this Jeep enjoying this interaction. Nice, okay, Command N, create a snapshot, call it number one. Because, whole time I'm looking at this image, I'm thinking black and white. So we're gonna go into the black and white module, hitting the V key, and let's look at the, uh, the color palette right here, okay? So we hit the V, boom. Look what happens, all this 
gets carved out. You've got this nice, lovely little S-curve here. And what that's done is that it's actually affected the color information because this is a color conversion and it's, it's either added or subtracted based on the tonality of this image to give it more punch. If we turn that off, you can see that there is a substantial difference. I tend to very much like what the black and white module does to black and white conversions. Interestingly, if you really want to illustrate this, you can go a lot further and you can think to yourself, okay, you know what? This girl's tank top and the roll bar were red, okay? So right now, if I bring this down, what's going to happen? It'll turn black. That's kind of cool. Now, what it also does, unfortunately, is it affects everything else. So now it looks like everybody's got mud on their face. Not great. If I bring it all the way up, it'll really brighten things up and it'll turn things white. Okay? That's a little bit too much. Now we've got, like, too much color information absent and we're losing way too much detail. So I'm going to bring that back to uh, where it was and let's just see. It was right there. Cool. All right. Next thing that I want to do here is, I, I'm not really going to mess too much about with this, but what I would like to do is in the greens, one thing you can do is you pump them all the way up, boom, you have like an infrared conversion here, or at least what is the beginnings of one. You bring them all the way down and you've got some kind of horror movie thing here where they're almost like cut out and superimposed. Don't like either of those things, um, but what I do want to do is just bring the greens down just a little bit of a touch here just to accentuate them against this background and in keeping with that I'm just going to add a little bit more in the way of contrast like right about there I'm just going to add a little bit more in the way of fill light and that is going to be my black and white edit all right off to you Jared all right and we're back Adam's here <laughs> All right, nice to see you, Jared. Yeah, this is week uh, 37 of the Raw Edits, and we have these Jeep people. So I, I want to say something first. Yeah. Uh, you made your black and white nice and crispy and crunchy and uh, mm -hmm. very, very nice, and, and you cropped. I did. And I think we actually may have done the same thing with the luminance thing, because what I did, I talked about in mine how we, we spoke a couple weeks ago about... Um, using the black and white conversion instead of taking out the saturation and vibrance, and that opened sure. up that opened up the HSL for the basically to control the greens, which I controlled. Right. Hold on, let me. I gotta get back here. I gotta turn off that badunk dunk from this <laughs> thing. All I hear is badunk dunk. Do not disturb me. Thank you. Utilizing the F button to make it full screen. There we go. You're up, Adam. So what'd you choose to do here? What was your thinking? Well, the very first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to lose the um, the tree that was over there. Um, I didn't feel that... I, I just felt it was a little bit imbalanced, so I want to crop that out right away. And then when I started thinking about cropping it, I was like, hmm, you know, all that kind of uh, wooded area at the top wasn't really doing for much much for me. Yeah. And um, being that this was a uh, you know a a vertical shot, you know, I was like, let's go one to one. And as soon as I did that, bam! I mean, this just came alive. You know, the way that these girls in this jeep just popped in the frame, um, it just automatically made sense to me. Yeah, so the 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 square crop definitely definitely draws it in, draws you in, makes it better because the the trees up top definitely take away from the image. Um, yeah. Yeah, and you know, look, when you're when you're sitting there and you're standing, you know, far enough away, um, sometimes you don't have the opportunity to do a, a vertical and a horizontal shot. And if you had a vertical orientation or portrait orientation to your camera, you know, and the Jeep just happens to be coming by, you get what you can, you know. So I, I don't mind the shot as it was shot, but I think that the crop is stronger. Sure, it well it draws you right into the image and and. You know, I don't. You know how my mind works. I don't usually think about the cropping. I mean, it's like the furthest oh. thing from my mind. But I guess in some sure. situations, like I say, the artistic crop and 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 things like that that you envision when you shoot it can be useful and give you some very interesting. Uh, can make the image stronger because this isn't something you could do in the camera. No, and and the thing is, I just felt that the interaction at all these these girls were having you know you've got like these two having this you know conversation you know what they're saying right <laughs> they're like, someone's in the front seat 
in the back seat. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But there's there's a lot of stuff going on. You know, you got the passenger and she's kind of like smiling at the photographer. You got the uh the the girl in the in the top left who's like looking real like, you know, kind of tough. Yeah. You know, the driver's kind of nonchalant. There's so much really terrific interaction going on there and I just felt that that just really needed to pop and It looks and, fun. Or, yeah. It does look fun. So, yeah, I mean Anything else you need to add? You want to add? I mean, what do you, you? I'll just ask. Color black and white. You just feel they're both different, unique in their own in their own way. I think that the, I think that they're both strong because I think that the uh, the exposure was real nice, and I think that the way that the the kind of like the orangey red tones of the mud with the greenish you know hues from the forest you know really frame and allow you know the jeep and the girls to pop, and I think as a black and white conversion, it also has just you know, it oozes with contrast and, and sharpness, and it just, I think they're both cool. I think depending on what you want to use them for, they, they can both work. And I think there's a guy peeing in the back right-hand corner, <laughs> now that I look closely at it. But you know what? You know what they say, being that there's a lot of mud, you know what would be perfect for this? An I shoot raw gold lens cloth. Yeah. <laughs> for mud. But anyway, yeah. Um, I like it. I like these shots. I like the edits. I like... I'm going to go back and watch yours to see how you popped your black and white to see if I could do something similar to that. But I think it's the crop that makes everything uh, pop a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, just looking at yours and mine, there's something about mine that just has a little bit more of a warmth to it. Um, you know, I don't know what that is, so I'll, I'll have to look at yours too as well. I mean, I, I just, you know, I'm biased. I prefer what I did here a sure. little bit more. Yeah, it's personal. Pre um, it all comes down to personal preference. Preference. And the crop really does, you know, give give an unfair advantage in that preference right here. Yeah, well, it takes away a lot of the the distractions in the image. But yeah, again, that's what this is all about: is, is seeing different ideas week in and week out that just keep us both getting better and everybody yep. out there getting better uh, with these edits because we keep seeing different things week in and week out that just if if you could take one nugget from each video, then that's you know that's all I could ask for, you know. Sure. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, I'm going to wrap it on up for this week, which was sponsored by Drobo again. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. You got all anything? Right. No, that's all. All right, Adam, thank you very much. And thank, thank you. you, guys. If you'd like to send us a raw file of any kind, be sure to do it to froknowsphoto at gmail.com. Be sure to include the JPEG, which I guess this photographer did not. Um, so that we can put all of the edits together and just see how everybody did uh, the subtle different the subtle differences between all of them. So that's about it. Adam, thank you again one more time. All right, thank you, Jared. Jared Poland Fro knows photo.com. See ya.